In this video, we'll talk about the limit comparison test, which is another method to figure out if a series converges or diverges. So with this test, we're doing a comparison again, but it's not quite as obvious as the direct comparison test from before. So the idea here is, again, I want to find a series I compare things to, but instead of looking for something that's bigger or smaller, I'm sort of looking for a series that behaves about the same as the one that I'm working with currently. I'll write out the formal definition and then we'll go into some sort of discussion of how it might work and examples of how you would use this. So we're going to let AN and BN be two positive sequences like before, and we'll assume that the limit of their ratios, AN over BN, exists. If this limit doesn't exist, you can't do anything with this at this point. But assume this limit exists. If we have this L, then we get the following. If L is greater than zero and not infinite, then the series for AN converges if and only if the series for BN converges, i.e. they have the same behavior. And this statement here means I can go either way. If I know that AN diverges, this tells me that BN also diverges. This means they always have the same behavior. They always either both converge or both diverge. We also then have two sort of side cases here. If I get that L is infinity and the series for AN converges, the series for BN also converges. And we have the reverse one for L equals zero. If L equals zero and BN converges, so does AN. Okay, this might seem complicated at first. You're going to mostly be using the first case where you have L being some positive number. But here's the way you kind of want to think about this test. L is the limit of the ratios here. So if L is a number, then that means basically A and BN are the, are the same as each other up to some constant, up to multiplying by some constant, right? AN could be like twice BN or something like that. But that means if the series for AN converges, and the series for BN is just twice that value and so also converges, and the same goes back and forth. So if this limit is some number that's bigger than zero and not infinity, then the series always behave the same way because they're sort of, at some point, just multiples of each other. There's nothing else going on. They're behaving the same up to that constant multiple, which doesn't affect convergence or divergence. If L is infinity, that means BN is going to zero faster than AN is. Right, they're, assume they're both going to zero here. It means BN is going to zero faster than AN is. And since AN converges and BN is going to be smaller than it because it's going to zero faster, it will also converge. And the L equals zero is the opposite case. They're both going to zero. BN is going to zero slower than AN, but BN converges. That will force AN to also converge. You don't need to know much about why it works unless that helps you to understand how to apply the theorem. You may mainly need to know how to use it to solve certain problems. One example of a problem like that is this one. Determine if the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n squared plus 2 over n cubed plus 2n squared minus 3n plus 4 converges. This might look really complicated at first, but limit comparison helps us out a lot. The main benefit of using limit comparison over direct comparison is I don't need an inequality here. I don't need to know that one is strictly bigger than the other. I just have to know that they're behaving the same in the limit. Because here, that minus 3n in the denominator is going to make it hard to do an inequality that's going to work for all n. It would work, but it's going to be tricky to set up here. So we're going to ignore that and use limit comparison instead. So how do you set up limit comparison? The main thing to think of is look for the dominating terms on the top and bottom and let that ratio be your comparing sequence. So I'm going to take, I have an n squared on top and an n cubed on the bottom. So I'll let an be the sequence that I have. And then I'll let bn be the ratio of the dominant terms. And the point is, if the dominant terms are actually dominant terms, they will carry everything near infinity and let this setup work. So I'm going to let this be an n squared over an n cubed, which is a 1 over n. Now let's see if we can find this limit and see if it exists. So this L that I want to find is the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n, which is the limit as n goes to infinity, the top term over the bottom term. I can then flip this 1 over n up top as an n to give me the limit as n goes to infinity of an n cubed plus 2n over n cubed plus 2n squared minus 3n plus 4. 
And we know what happens here. Right now we're in our highest power rule situation because we have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. I can see that I have an n cubed up top and n cubed in the bottom. They're the same power with both coefficients 1 in front. It means this limit is 1. This is bigger than 0, so we're in the first case of the limit comparison test. What this means is, by the limit comparison test, the series of a n behaves the same as the series for b n. But we know about b n. But the series for b n is the series of 1 over n, and that diverges. So because a n behaves the same, we know that our original series also diverges because it does the same thing that bn did, and that was a p-series. So you can sort of see everything come together here. It's important to know about p-series and how they work. It's important to know how to set these different tests and to use these p-series as your comparison functions so that you know when these things converge or diverge to set up these sorts of arguments. All right, limit comparison test has the benefit of not needing one series to be strictly bigger than the other one, but it still needs the appropriate choice of what you pick for your series, how you set things up, and actually working out this limit correctly to make sure you get the right answer for the limit comparison test. So that wraps up this way of determining if a series of positive terms converges or diverges using a comparison to a different series using the limit comparison test.